up guys? Super excited about today's video. Today, what we're gonna be focusing on is cutting short hair in our fingers. So we're gonna be doing a pixie cut. It's gonna have a disconnected top. We're also gonna color it nice platinum blonde as well. So kind of a bonus add on at the end of the video. So what I'm doing right now is finding my sections because you wanna make sure that you don't have the section too wide on the top. You wanna make sure that it's gonna fall right. So what I do is I look for the parietal ridge. I go a little bit below it so it sits a little heavy and then I follow that back to the high point or the mid crown area I go across the top and then I'm going to create a second section right in the crown area it's going to be diagonal back for the first line coming off the parietal ridge and then I go down to just above the occipital bone I go straight across from there and then I go back up so I'm basically creating almost like a triangle or a piece of pizza with the tip of it bit off right so I want I don't want to have a complete triangle angle um, because I'm going to use that as a, I like having that horizontal line in there um, to, se to separate it but we're going to be going on the sides first we're going to be cutting that diagonal back on both sides so you can see there this is my brand new scissor. It's not out till fall 2018. I'm really excited to be launching it. We have two different sizes, but this has got everything I love in a scissor. If you see the thumb, uh, it has a nice thumb groove to it. It's got a nice small tang. Um, so it's super comfortable in your hand. It's also not a removable tang, which I like. I did a flat screw that's also matte black. It's got my logo on it and it was manufactured in Japan by Mizutani. So I'm super excited to partner with them on this because I honestly wouldn't want to have a scissor made anywhere else other than Mizutani. So super excited for that. That will be coming out. A lot of you guys want to know how much it is. It's going to be living right around between $550 and $599. We're in production right now, so we will know uh, soon what that price is going to be and a little bit closer to the date of when it comes out, but we're thinking September, October. All right, so as I start the haircut, I start working diagonal back. So you saw me comb the hair towards the face, and I cut my line directly on the face. It gives me a nice hard line. It gives me also a, a nice uh, visual point to start it and then as I go through and I'm obviously speeding this up quite a bit because everything is very repetitive but I work with my hands my fingers parallel to the parting and I work all the way through diagonal back and just cut my section now the reason I like to put it in my hands as opposed to cutting scissor over comb um, there are time and place for scissor over comb but when you're working on somebody's head shape Mary's got a little bit more of a rounded head shape so what I wanted to do is create some nice weight lines so I like to do that every single section I take in my hand I focus on what my elevation is because the lower the elevation the more shape I'm gonna build out the the higher the elevation, the more I'm going to collapse the shape. So I wanted to make sure that I'm creating the right shape for her head shape and making the haircut look the best that I can. So I go through. It takes a little more effort, but honestly, I think that this is what separates um, good haircuts from great haircuts to make sure that um, you're really focused on what you want the, the outcome of your shape to be. So notice as I go through here, her head shape starts to peel away. And when I say peel away, it just means it's getting further away from my hand. And as it gets further away from my hand, if I don't change my elevation, then the weight gets, starts to build up more. So everything I'm cutting right now is pretty much straight out from the head. But once I get up to that parietal ridge area, I'm not following the round of the head. I'm over directing everything towards myself, which starts to build up a little bit of weight. I like having that little bit of weight in there. I think it builds a nice shape to the head, but you want to make sure you don't drop it too low and create too much weight within the haircut. Hope that makes sense for you guys. If it doesn't, for some reason, uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to explain it better. But as I work down the head shape as well and I start to work towards the occipital bone, now I keep my finger, uh, my elevation pretty much straight out from the head, keeping it collapsed. But this last line that you're seeing right here, that's where I start to drop the elevation. So you see a little bit of buildup of weight. It's not a lot. Um, I'm not dropping it too far, but I do start to build it up just a bit. And I'll start to build it up even more right here in this uh, kind of a high occipital bone, low crown area, because I want to build out that shape on her head. Mary has a little bit more of a flat um, occipital bone area. So some of our clients have that. And the way that you can kind of counteract that is start to build a little extra weight into the back. So that's just dropping that elevation a bit to kind of give the appearance of a nice uh, head shape, nice occipital bone area. 
So as I follow through, uh, what I like to do is continue that diagonal back parting all the way over to the other like right hand side corner nape area. Um, and then I'll go back through and I'll crisscross it. And what that does is it's almost like cross checking it and cutting it at the same time. So it connects the two sides in the back together. And I'll show you guys more of that in a second. So we're doing the same thing to create the guideline on this side as well. So I go through, I comb the hair towards her face and then I go through and I cut. Um, I noticed right there, I didn't cut it as short. So I go a little bit um, shorter on that second uh, round. But the reason I, I like to cut it first and then take a look at it and then go back through and cut it some more is because you can't add the hair back on once you cut it off. So you want to make sure you have the right length. So then I use that as my guideline and I do the same exact thing I did on the opposite side, cutting palm to palm, keeping that elevation pretty much straight out from the head, almost elevating that guideline just a little bit so I don't start to build up weight when I don't want to. And I just go through and cut. The scissor that I'm using obviously is uh, the scissor that I showed you at the beginning. It's the scissor that I've been creating and working on with Mizutani. Um, but the thing I like about this scissor, it's a five inch scissor, which isn't something I was normally used to working with, but I wanted to start working with a smaller scissor because of the fact that when you're cutting precise haircuts, you don't want to push the hair. And the longer the blade on your scissor, the more push it's going to give to the hair, no matter what. Um, there's definitely sharper blades that you can get to help with that. But for the most part, the shorter the blade, the more precise you're going to get with the cut because there's no reason to cut six inches of hair at the same time. So we're making a five inch scissor, which is the one I'm using, and also a five and a half inch for those of you that want something a little bit longer. Um, also, if you want to do scissor over comb work, you can do it a little bit better with a five and a half inch. So we're making both, but I'm really loving using this five inch scissor uh, for the purpose of precision cutting. Notice I'm not doing a lot of clipping at all, uh, really, in this section. Um, I did pre-prep uh, her hair with a little bit of gel. Uh, and the reason I use the gel is because it helps give a little bit of hold to the hair as you go through it. It helps keep it clean. Um, people call it a cutting lotion, but uh, it's really just a styling product. I like to use a styling product for cutting lotion because of the fact that uh, when you use a styling product, you're consistently combing it through the hair the entire time. So then when you go back to uh, blow dry the hair, you've already combed that styling product on every bit of the hair as you went. So I just, that's a nice little quick tip for you guys. So you can see how clean that looks. Um, this is one of my favorite things to cut is a nice round shape. Following the head shape, it's one of the most difficult things to cut because you're constantly moving your body, so it's hard to stay consistent. But this is where you're seeing where I start to crisscross it in the back. So I went one way with it uh, when I cut the left side, and now when I'm cutting the right side, I'm coming back over it. So we create almost like an X feeling in the back of the head, which I'm trying to show you now. Now we're going to go in, do some scissor over comb just to do cross-checking. So on the left side, I went diagonal back. So I'm going to go diagonal forward and just cross-check it. I've now switched to the five and a half inch blade and I just follow it up and just clean up any um, imperfections in the haircut. It gives it a nice smooth feeling to the haircut. You can see that bottom blade, so I keep one blade nice and steady and I keep it right on the bone of the comb. So as the hair comes into the comb, it holds it nice for me and then I just cut it off. I'll go through, do a little detail work around the ear. Now, I would definitely challenge you guys to use your scissor more, especially around the ear and doing this detail work. But if you really want to, you could use a trimmer as well. I just think there's a little bit more of an organic feel when you use a scissor for this stuff. I'm just cleaning up the neckline. I wanted to keep everything very natural um, around her hairline as well. Uh, there's no reason for me, it's not my style to create nice hard lines in the hairline. I wanted something nice and soft. Plus, we're going to be blonding her hair, so um, it's already going to have some kind of built-in texture and movement to it. So I didn't want to make it too sharp looking um, in there. It's just, again, not my style. Using that steady blade to go around the ear, that's a, a nice quick tip for you guys. If you just pull the ear down and you use the steady blade along uh, the ear, you can cut that nice line around it. This 
Same thing, just working up the hair. I went diagonal back on the right side, so now I'm going diagonal forward up to cross check it. So you can see this buildup that I already started, and I talked about Mary doesn't have a real strong occipital bone. Well, now we're really gonna build it in with our sectioning here. So I'm gonna go vertical with everything. The reason I'm choosing vertical is because it allows me to work more with my elevation, so I can really focus on what I want, um, where I want that hair to sit, where I want it to be heavy. So notice my angle. I come straight off of the head shape, and I build up weight right away. So the top tip part of my fingers is almost at zero degrees, if you think about it. Um, more actually, let's call it 45 now that I'm looking at it. 45 degrees, which is gonna be a nice buildup of weight sitting right at that low crown, a, a high occipital bone area, which gives me that nice buildup. So you can see how it disconnects on the sides. Um, that's something fun that we're adding into the haircut. Uh, obviously, if you wanted to connect the back, I would cut this more diagonal back, um, keep that crisscross going like we did um, on, the si on the sides and the bottom. But we're going to do this disconnected. And uh, it's going to be connected really more in the center. We're cutting it more of a square feel on the back, so everything's coming straight out from the head, um, which over-directs this part right here that you're looking at. It over-directs it, over it back, but then it pushes a little extra weight towards the front. So now we're going to cut the top, and this is super disconnected right now. We're going to go through um, slight uh, diagonal forward, we could call it, uh, depending on what way she's going to wear her hair. I'm going to go in point cutting her hair because I want to create a lot of texture, but notice it's on a slight diagonal. And the reason I'm doing this because I'm overdirecting everything back towards me in the back left-hand side of the head, the back left-hand corner of that uh, section, because I'm going to push the weight towards the uh, front right hand corner of the haircut. So if that makes sense, anywhere you pull the hair, um, it's going to push back the opposite direction. So I want to pull it towards the back left hand corner so it pushes the most weight towards the front right hand corner, if that makes sense. So pulling it back, doing a lot of point cutting in there, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow dry her hair, and then after I finish it, uh, we're going to do even more cutting. So don't, uh, don't be too freaked out about how disconnected it is right now. We're going to do some more techniques to take it a little bit shorter. So I'm using the Paul Mitchell uh, Neuro, the new Neuro blow dryer. I'm also using the Ergo Diamond Head Paddle Brush. It's a tiny paddle brush. It's one of my favorite brushes that I've uh, ever used because... Um, I love a paddle brush more than anybody, I think, but a tiny paddle brush is even more perfect because I love it when I'm doing short hair like this. Then I go in with the Paul Mitchell Neuro um, iron and then polish it off again with another pass of the blow dryer. Now, I like to switch up my tools, create different textures, so we're gonna go in with the Donald Scott Twist Razor to create a more shattered appearance of this top portion of the haircut. So I bring uh, vertical sections down, almost like if you guys think about balayage, taking those little pieces and then going through with my Donald Scott twist, which is available on freesaloneducation.com. Go on there, uh, go into the hair and carve kind of a, a triangular feel just to break up that side section. Now we're gonna go through and cut the fringe area. So I'm gonna carve it right from the very front uh, left-hand corner and I'm gonna over direct it towards me. And then what that's gonna do is again, push more weight over to the front right hand corner uh, of her head. So we're creating that texture, creating kind of a side bang, and then pushing that length off to the side. I love the shape of this haircut. Using the twist is so cool because it's almost like drawing with a pencil, just being able to go in there and take the hair that you want off of there. And then I go through and do some more point cutting, create more texture on the top now that I've got the hair blown dry. So you can see this is already a cool haircut. Just imagine when we get done with it and we do the blonde uh, hair color on it as well. So 
So I'm going to give you guys a quick preview of the blonde hair color. So it's going to be a one minute quick video. I used a, a Joyco lightener to, to do it. I'm going to give you guys the full video of it as well um, coming up, but I just wanted to give you guys a preview. There's not much to really talk about except for the fact that I used this Joyco Vero Light lightener. Um, I mixed that with 20 volume, put it right on the scalp. I did that process twice and then I overlay it with a toner uh, to get my end result. So here's the video. Guys, then I go in with an A9 Light Ash Blonde from Joico. It's their Vero K-Pack color, um, and I tone it. And I put that right on her wet hair, and here is the end result. Hope you guys like the video. Hope you like the cut. Hope you like the color. Let me know. Thanks for watching.